welcome everybody to a series I'm doing in advance of my book series. It kind of sounds weird, but hey, we'll go with that. Um, the series is called Aspects of Morn. It's an anthology series, meaning you can pick up any book in the series and read it without having to worry about the rest of them. Um, that is by design, and I took a nod from Terry Pratchett in that regard. Uh, it's written by me, Mike Manders, a.k.a. Geekonomicon, who you pretty much are listening to me. That's my alter ego, uh, Geeklopedia, etc. Um, so for the purpose of this first video, we're going to be talking about Morn itself, the world. And each consecutive video, I'm going to be doing something different. I'm going to try and alternate between the world itself and the citizenry, the professions, and even the characters that are going to be in the book series. Um, you'll see uh, as we go forward. I have taken kind of a nod from, uh, who was it, Brugli, Brugli and Quill, who do a lot of, who've done a stellar job showcasing uh, the Backrooms content that's out there. But unlike the Backrooms, Aspects of Morn is solely my creation. Um, this is something I've been working on for 30 years. It's my take on a superheroic universe. And I really hope you guys enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed uh, prepping it and writing it over the last year and a half. Whew, it's been a long haul. So what is, what is Morn? Morn is a modern fantasy sci-fi world with a dash of horror. We'll get more into that as we go through it, because literally the cities themselves kind of gravitate towards different themes, as you'll see as we go. Um, there are multiple aspects. Uh, I've kind of taken a nod from Alice Andre Norton here, who's the grand dame of science fiction. I think doesn't get as enough credit these days. She's She was an amazing writer and actually helped establish the alternate reality concept. But instead of alternate realities, I just have aspects that the gods themselves created to help usher races that were in need of either a fresh start or trying to get away from something that happened on their world. Um, and we'll explain as we... That's each race you'll understand. It is a world that's adjacent to Earth. Um, and Earth does play a huge role in the uh, in what's going on in the aspects of Morn, which you'll understand. Uh, they literally can see our content that we create, like I'm creating this video. They'd be able to watch that and whatnot. But there's no monetary system here. It's based on a thing called Deeds for Deeds, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, there's a bunch of myriad races here from technologically inclined to technological life to like the standard elves, dwarves, werewolves, aliens, and even more, even humans. And we'll get into humans later. Uh, they've been, there have been several instances where uh, Morn has said, hey, we can't let this happen on Earth, and they've rescued people. And we'll get to that when we need to. Um, it's, again, my take on a superhero world. I call them heroics. But the citizens here are not helpless. It would be very foolish of a typical mugger to go, I want your money, because you don't know what you're dealing with. You could be dealing with a wizard who's got a spell at the ready. You could be dealing with a martial artist who's just going to do a number on you. Um, there's you're t You take a huge chance assaulting typical citizens on Morn because you, it's a mixed bag. Uh, nine times out of ten, they know how to defend themselves. In fact, citizens have been known to step in when heroics are about to actually help out in case there's others that need help and assistance and whatnot. They are not useless by any means. It's one of those things that I wanted to break the cliche of that are in typical comic books. I said, uh, always, the superheroes are there to protect typical citizens. What if the citizens could actually step up a little bit themselves? That's where my world comes in. Um, there are uh, multiple aspects where different races live on different aspects, different 
uh, cultures have gravitated, even worlds where it's just heroic communities, where it's kind of downtime and the heroics go and go, I need a rest. Um, <clears throat> uh, and getting, speaking of heroics, they're there to help out in situations where citizens really can't help themselves. Um, uh, they're there to help let the citizens go about their daily lives and help usher that in. Because let, most people would rather just go about their daily routine without having to deal with the crud that superhero universes bring with it. Um, but so the heroics are there not to per se save the world, but to allow the world to continue on its course. Uh, another cliche I wanted to break. It, it, not every story is going to be, I've got to save the world. No, I've got to save my pocket of the world. That's what we're going to be taking a look at as you read the books. Um, and again, that's a nod from Terry Pratchett because he did that really well. Um, I, I did mention that there's no monetary system on Morn. It's deeds for deeds. That's a nod I've taken from Gene Roddenberry. Believe it or not, in the future, money is used on other worlds, but really not on Earth. Earth is now a uh, society in Star Trek where it's not money, but what you can do for society, which is what I think we need to gravitate more toward. We don't, but that's this world. Um, I do like to call it kindness for kindness. Uh, it's kind of cool if you go to a grocery store and you need to get a gallon of milk, you help restock the shelves in the milk section to clean up a mess. It's that simple. You help out for a little while, and you got your groceries for the day. Easy. Um, <clears throat> I, I like writing it. It becomes not so much of a chore because you're trying to do a paycheck, but more of, hey, I'm helping out. I'm contributing to my neighborhood or I'm contributing to society because I walk in and it gives you a pretty good feeling walking in, getting your groceries and saying hi to people and helping out a little bit and stocking shelves and talking to people. There you go. Everybody's customer service oriented as one as one of my, as my editor said it and they thought it was kind of cute. It is not a perfect utopia, but the benefits of my society that I've created do outweigh the problems. Um, one last note about Morn. It is gender fluid. <laughs> You're going to see that with a Kira Kazao. Kira Kazao, um, I is female elf, and she's married to a female elf. Um, her wife's sister is also involved with, uh, same, uh, same sex. Yeah, I have the LGBTQ community, I, I, want my books to be known as a safe haven for the LGBTQ community. I myself am non-binary and it, it's not going to be uh, in your face, but it's going to be there. Uh, you'll get kissing, you'll get hand-holding, you'll get flirting between couples. That's about it. Uh, the main thing you're gonna be fo we're going to be focusing on is the stories and uh, how the heroics go about assisting the world. Um, and the other thing is a majority of my characters are female. So again, my brain it is female. It's not male. I am non-binary. So you're going to see a majority female cast as we go forward. That's another cliche I wanted to break because Marvel and DC, uh, even though they now have some strong female characters, they didn't at the start. It was pretty much male-dominated books. And for me, I wanted to break that. I don't, I have also gone done away with sidekicks. There's no sidekicks. You're not going to be seeing that. No origin stories, nothing like that. You're going to be seeing the characters as they are going in. And with that, I come to the conclusion of this first modern, <laughs> broad overview of uh, Morn. I hope you guys like these videos as they come out. I'll refine them and get them in better shape. And I look forward to answering any questions you might have about the world and the characters therein. And with that, I will see you all in the near future. And thank you for listening.